Hey, what's up, Florida? And welcome to the second episode of FMTV, Florida Music Television. I'm your host, Vic Lima, and everybody knows me as the Beanie Guy. In this episode, Where's the Beanie? We go quite and stake and loo for the MFD Benefit Fundraiser for Mike Dillon. We interview some artists and see their performances as the music community comes together for him. It's amazing to see the rock and roll family out here. Later on, then I go visit a buddy of mine who does an off-frame restoration on a 69 Camaro SS. We also feature some music from the amazing Gary Shutt. Later in the episode, hey, who's that? We go to Verona in Newport Ritchie and check out some metal artists on the Gummy Worm Tour with Justin Symbol, Star Daddy, featuring DJ Swamp, formerly of Ministry, Rick William Rust, and a local artist called Bougie Man. So stick around for all this and more on this episode of FMTV, Florida Music Television. Hey, what's up? Beanie Guy here, Vic Lima, and we're at Quaker Steak and Lube, and we're here today because we're raising money for a good friend of ours, Mike Dillon. That's right, Mike Dillon, you all know him. We love him. He's been in the music community a long time. He's been having some health issues lately, and that's why we're here. We have so many bands, everybody, raffles, baskets, donations, everything's been going on, and we really appreciate all the support that we have. I've got a couple interviews, I've got live performances, all kinds of things coming up soon, so stick around. You're watching FM TV, Florida Music Television. Television. Vic Lima, I'm the Beanie Guy. We're going to help Mike Dillon out because make sure you buy raffle tickets. Get involved in the auction. We have a we have a tip bucket up here, which is donations for Mike. Mike, Mike Dillon, we, we love, love you. Ella! What's up? This is Greg Zinn and Aneta Szymankowska from Straight Jacket Smile, and you are watching FM TV. TV. Vic Lima here, the Beanie Guy. We're at Quaker Steak and Lou for the Mike Dillon benefit. And of course, I'm here standing with some of the artists that just got off the stage. One Eye Jack. That's right, One Eye Jack. I got both vocalists here. How you doing, brother? Steve Schaefer. Come on, brother. Steve Schaefer here has been uh, in the band now for quite a, quite a, a couple years almost right now. There. And of course, here on my right and your left is David Freeman. How you doing, brother? Good, brother? And of course, Dave's been an old friend of mine, one of my first recipients of uh, Tampa Bay Music Network Awards. And um, I want to ask him a couple simple questions here that's going to tell you a little more about the artists. I like to find out how they got involved in the music business. So I've created what I've called now, hopefully, the three infamous Beanie questions. So my first question is, is at what age and what was it that actually influenced you to get in this crazy rock and roll business? Um, well, actually, I was in my teens, about 14. I actually started playing guitar. That was the first thing. I started listening to Metallica. It was the first band that I ever really thought, like, wow, this is pretty cool. You know, I was about 12 years old, and my mother bought me a guitar, and I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. I couldn't play it very well, so I stood in front of my mirror and jammed out some Metallica, and that's pretty much, it went from there. And I was never any good at guitar, so I started beating the hell out of drums. 1978, I went to a Kiss concert. Fell in love with Gene Simmons, Spittin' Blood. So I was about 17, and uh, Motley Crue, man, Nikki Six. The 80s, huh? Yeah, I was a big Crue fan. And so well, I started out when I was probably about five years old third generation drummer in my family, okay. so I was kind of born with it. My musical roots actually go back to my famous grandfather, whose name was Buddy Greco, who was part of the Rat Pack with Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr., Dean Norton, all that other good stuff. Uh, funny story, I, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a drummer. So when I was about 10 years old, my dad bought me a drum set, and that's what I wanted to do. Um, so we taught my brother how to play guitar, my sister how to play bass, and I wanted to be the drummer. Well, my sister flaked out over time, 
And my brother's like, you can't bring a drum set everywhere you go, but you can bring a guitar. So then I started playing guitar about 12 years old, picked up a bass at 16. Uh, I was probably about seven years old when I picked up my first guitar. Um, I started playing a lot of Alice in Chains. And I'd say that Alice in Chains is probably what the main influence was that got me into singing and got me into playing. I was about five when I picked up a guitar. I actually was into country music and liked George Strait and just wanted to be a country singer and then realized that I couldn't sing. And, uh, and then I decided to just be a lead guitarist instead. Well, I was born like that. <laughs> to be honest, like for real. My first uh, word was like, ooh, 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 and that's what happened. Then I started singing. And I was singing one song, uh, Tomatoes, called Tomatoes. And I got the first place. I was the best. And from that time, I started singing with the band. What age was that, Anetta? I think I was like five. Five years old, and you were playing in competitions and winning them back then? Yes. Wow. Um, I was about 11 years old, and I grew up watching my uncle, Mickey Moyer, play guitar. And he had this beautiful white guitar, and I just thought it was the coolest thing I've ever seen, man. So I kind of looked up to him, still do, for many years. And um, well, What age was that, though? That was, God, super young, but I didn't start playing until I was 12. Um, my second question, gentlemen, is... At what age did you actually finally get in a band? You know, like, when did you start playing? What were your influences at, at that age? Well, I didn't get to a band until about three or four years ago. I actually started uh, singing. And, yeah, it wasn't that long ago. I wasn't really doing much musically until I started doing karaoke, and I got a band asked me to come sing with them, and the rest is history. I'll tell you what, like I said, I, I started playing guitar. I was no good at it, so I decided that I wanted to beat on stuff, so I started playing drums probably around the age of 15, and my first band, it was just a little local original band, and I played in bands playing drums for probably, I'm 38 now, so for 20 years, you know, and uh, up until recently I've had some medical problems with my back, so I started singing, you know, and here I am out here, you know, I'm, I love music, so putting my heart and soul out on the stage. I was about 20 years old, believe it or not, and uh, we started a docking band because I love George Lynch. Yes. And uh, yeah, I bought a striped guitar and went to town there. Kind of sucked, but that's how I got started. Oh. I'm about 20. About 20 years old? Uh, probably around 17, 18. I bought a bass at Seminole Music. 80 bucks. Seminole Music, John Spinelli. <laughs> You know, what age were you? Like 17. About 17, and uh, what were your influences back then? Uh, More Motley Crue? Yeah, I was a crew head. I'd probably say that through like junior high school to high school. That, but My first band, I was about 16 or 17 years old, called Drop Dead Ugly. Of course, my second question is, and of course, I've known you guys for quite a long time, before you were Stone Gray, and a lot of people don't know this. I, of course, you know, the media guy does a lot of Tampa Bay Music Network showcases around the Bay Area for a long time, decade now. And you guys played at a, a Silver Dollar Lounge, which is one of my first events uh, showcasing bands. And the name of the band was... And these guys, let, let me tell you something, these guys at that age, you were like, what, 12, 14 years old? I mean, they, you were young. My uh, first time on the stage was when I was like 10. And then I got in the band, like real band, rock and roll band with the old music. I had, I was 14, yeah. 14 years old? And what were your influence? Original music, you wrote your own stuff? Just only original music. I never did covers. Steve, at what time and what did you feel like was the most memorable moment in your life? When, and, and, you know, like, what was it that made you feel, wow, I'm in the music career. I am actually living my dream. I have to say, um, with the first band that I was in, Strange Jacket Smile, actually, we did a big uh, Bikes versus Jeeps, Harleys versus Jeeps event. And it was the first time I was ever on a huge stage. There was probably over a thousand people at this place. As far as I could see, singing, they were singing with us. And it was the first time I was really like, wow, this is, this is really cool. I mean, this is, I, I'm here. I've been in a lot of bands. I've played in front of a lot of people, a lot of stages. But I'll have to tell you, this band, One Eye Jack, it's, it's my baby, and every time I get on stage with these guys, that's the best. That's it. Uh, actually, people recognizing who I am, which is kind of weird. I'm, I'm like a humble guy, and I'm not used to that at all. And from what? 
playing in One Eye Jack? Uh, yeah, people started recognizing me in Wicked, but a lot more now, for right, sure, right. in One Eye Jack. Yeah. Right. But yeah, just being in this band here, you know, everything's cool. Yeah. I gotta say, probably when we started playing Bike Week and Biketoberfest over in Daytona, you know, we were starting to draw crowds of like two to three hundred people, and that's probably what really made it for me, where it was like, you know, impactful enough to be like, wow, this is actually a rock and roll band. Well, that's definitely one of them, but I would say uh, when our second album came out, Voice of Reason, and uh, the guys that worked with us on it, Dustin and Brad, are very professional guys in the industry, and they helped us out a lot, and we did that whole thing in Nashville, and we got the complete product, and we were like, this is perfect for the commercial industry, and it's still true music too, you know? Well, that was, yeah, I remember when we did our first song, first original song with my band named Arrhythmia. And the first time at the stage, like with the real band, real people, bass, you know, guitar and everything. I was like, yes, that's my thing. I really want to do that. Besides uh, getting the privilege of playing next to the talented, talented people like Aneta, Gary and Michael, um, that's today. but. Uh, initially, when I was 19 years old, um, I got picked up in some shithole bar with my original band to go on a major label tour with a female artist named Lennon Murphy. Um, had about 20, 25 arenas under my belt. Got to tour with Nazareth for about three months during a year tour. Um, I think the first arena I ever played, that was kind of like, you know, holy shit, I've arrived. You know, <laughs> little, little did I know there was a lot more work that goes into <laughs> yeah. for you guys right here to support our family in need. Thank you everybody. Thank you very much. You're watching FM TV and we'll be right back. Buddy Vic Lima here, Beanie Guy for Florida Music Television, and we're here at another secret location. Got a buddy of mine, we'll just call him Joe for now, Joe's Body Shop, and he's restoring a 69 Camaro. His car is unbelievable. Got a couple pictures we'll be showing you of uh, when he bought it as he's been tearing it apart. And as you can see in the background, we've already got motors and all kinds of stuff put in it, subframe. He's replaced all the panels on this car and uh, we're just going to keep on talking to him and we're going to get a little small interview on him on exactly what he's got in this car. He's valued at $50,000. This gentleman here, he's using those Camaros, Chevelles, all hot rods and sells them to some pretty big buyers. So we'll do that in just a couple more minutes with more action right here at Secret Location. Big Lima, I'll be right back. I'm everywhere ready, and you're watching FMTV. JC, wheel rough, four speed, 
you got a lot of good stuff on this car and I've seen you do and I've helped you do a lot of cars in the past uh, but this car is valued up to fifty thousand dollars you said oh, yeah. when it's totally restored because it's it's a total frame off restoration as you can see we painted the frame and everything he's pulled all the parts off uh, considering that they, when the car pulled in on a record it looked great but he's got all brand new panels floor pans inside the trunk cow uh, you know roof quarter panels doors everything so he's you know he goes completely all out when he does these cars and uh, it's one of the most incredible things is to see the process of something like this being built. And when the car drove in, the average person would look at it and say, wow, that car looks great. And he still takes it completely apart and does a total off-frame restoration. Earlier this morning, we had the car in the air as so we put the subframe and the motor in it. So an incredible feat of restoring these vehicles completely off-frame in less than 30 days sometimes. So uh, like I said, serious inquires only he does his own work and uh, he doesn't really do any customer work as some of the other shops I work at but if the money's right and the clients right uh, we could talk about it so my name is Vic Lima you're watching FM TV damn that's hot we'll be back in just a couple minutes stay tuned how's it going Vic Lima here and we're back at Joe's secret shop where he's restoring his 6 now and we're checking up on him. He seems to have painted the vehicle already. He's got the motor in. He's putting wiring in right now. And uh, he's going to be putting the interior and everything together. So we're going to look around a little bit and let him get back to work. And then we'll come back and we'll see the complete product. You're watching FM TV. And the segment is, damn, that's hot. finished product in here in the trunk. He's put a complete floor pan. He's already jammed the vehicle and it's ready for paint. But I, as you can see, he's texturized it, sealed it and everything. So this is almost like when it comes out of factory. So when he sells this car, this car is practically probably better than it was when it came off the showroom floor. Hey, what's going on? Welcome back to FM TV, Florida Music Television, the Beanie Guy here. We're back. Check on my buddy Joe's secret location. His 69 Camaro that we've been following. He's totally restored. He's done now. You gotta check this thing out. Damn, that's hot. Holy moly. Talk about a full off-frame restoration. This guy does it all. Every piece is brand new, original to back to factory specs. And it's just amazing the work that he does. We're gonna drip, pull it outside so you can get some better look at it. But I'm telling you right now, if you've got the money, this guy here will store a car for you well. This one, geez, if you got him. Be back just now. Now check this out. Everything brand new. Damn, that's hot. I was saying here, Big Wing with the Beanie Guy, listen to this thing. You gotta see it. And it's unbelievable the work that this guy's done. I've restored a lot of cars myself. I've even helped him with a couple Chevelles and some other stuff. But when you want things done right, offering restoration, it's gonna take a couple months. Not no week, as you see all the other shows. So this is reality. Everything brand new, unbelievable. Exhaust, rear end, frame off, everything painted.
painted, it's unbelievable. We have some mirrors that get underneath the car. <laughs> when you want it done right, call the beanie guy. I'll tell you who to call. All right, Joe. Well, listen, thank you very much for letting us come out and check out your top location, secret location. <laughs> and uh, we appreciate all your time. And, of course, you're watching FM TV. And like I said before, cars, bikes, women, rock and roll, beanie guy does it all. So if you need to get a hold of me, I will put you in touch with the right people. You're watching. Damn! That's hot. We'll be back in just a couple minutes with some more FM TV. This is Todd Latore from Queensryche. And Steve Galvin from Wicked Steel. And you're watching FMTV. Rock on, Beanie Guy. And now for our segment, Hey, Who's That? We go to Verona in Newport Ritchie to check out some killer metal artists. Hey everybody, what's up? Vic Lima here, the Beanie Guy with Florida Music Television, FMTV. And we're here tonight for the Gummy Worm tour and i'm standing here with one of the metal bands playing here tonight and we've got some serious metal acts here these guys are touring down got a cd coming out or a single they're releasing a cd coming up but i'll get to that in just a minute but first of all let me find out who i'm talking with what's your name sir my name is justin symbol aka the star daddy star daddy and you are dj swamp dj swamp rmfl ryan redacted redacted lynch ryan for short <laughs> <laughs> What age, our first question is, and I'll go individually to you, at what age were you, and what was it that influenced you to get into this crazy metal business? I was 16 years old, and I was on the bleachers of my school, and with my best friend, and we were hanging out doing things that I can't talk about, and we were like hanging out, and I was like, you know what? I want to be a rock star. I want to get all the girls. I want to travel the world. I want to follow my dreams. And I was 16 years old. What were your influences? What did you listen to? What you know? What kind of music were you listening to at that time? My main influences at that time was like in the 90s. It was like Nirvana, Smashing Pumpkins, Marilyn Manson, Nine Inch Nails, Rob Zombie, stuff like that. Yeah. All right, some good heavy stuff. And how about you, DJ Swamp? What age were you when you uh, got started in the business? I would say, well, I was uh, I was always messing around with music since a very young age, but I started DJing. I would say I got the, the bug to start scratching when I. Uh, got the soundtrack to the movie Breaking, and it had the song Reckless by Ice-T and Chris the Glove Taylor, and that, that got me into scratching. I've always wanted to do music since I was a kid, and my early influences were mostly in uh, grunge, like Nirvana, Stone Taken Pilots, Pearl Jam, all this Seattle stuff, but I, I grew up around heavy metal, my parents listened to early Metallica and Ozzy, so I heard all that stuff was growing up, that was what I wanted to do. Exactly. And, and when was it that you actually started performing? I mean, uh, at what age were you starting you know, start playing? Why? I was like around 20 years old, and I was upstate in upstate New York, Syracuse. I had a band called Nursing Home. I used to wear a paper bag on my head, and it was like performance art piece. So, uh, you know, we did a lot of crazy stuff. I was covered in tar and feathers at one point. I was trying to make some kind of misguided political statements. I don't think anyone really understood, including me, what I was saying. But uh, I was saying something. So that was when it started. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty cool. And that was 20. So it was actually quite a long time in between before I actually started performing. 16, 22, something like that. Yeah, so I didn't, I didn't. did you finish high school? 
did. Yeah. <laughs> Good thing. Yeah. Uh, dude, this one, how about you? How about you? When did you start performing or scratching live and, and really, you know, enjoying what you uh, well, what I was I was doing stuff locally in Cleveland, Ohio. But at 24, I won the USA DMC DJ Championship, and then I was all over the world doing shows. Wow! All right. Well, we got a we got an international star we ran into here at Verone. And Ryan, what about you? What age did you actually start performing? Uh, probably not till my mid twenties. Started playing at uh, open mics at the bars that I used to frequent. And shout out to High Velocity. It was good times back then. Uh, it's uh, Beachwood, New Jersey. It's where I know the second half of your uh, your duo here. But so, did that did that for a little bit, few and far in between. And then I stopped for a while. And then I started playing again. Really, sometime later when I met him. So basically, I guess DJ had the biggest moment here. He he won a championship. Was it again? So what what was your biggest moment? What what was you know a moment that in in, in this music career, this crazy career that you went? Wow, you know I'm actually living the dream. I'm actually in the music business as I thought I would be as a kid. What what was it that impacted you and made you feel that way? For me, every moment is is the biggest moment because it's not about accolades and awards and prestige and other people's approval. It's about everything from watching a local artist that's opening for me that blew me away, like happened tonight. Uh, everything from that, shout out Bougie Maine, to, uh, you know, we got to open for Ministry, uh, and that's how I met DJ Swamp. He was the DJ of Ministry. Ministry was a childhood favorite of mine, a band that influenced me a lot, and that was a big moment, you know, playing in front of 2,000 people in Montreal and being direct support because the other band's bus broke down. Cool, cool, great. And how about you, Jay? Well, that that championship, or you've been out with some two big things, bands out here. Two things. Uh, 1997, performing on the Grammy Awards, DJing for Beck. And in uh, 2017, uh, performing with Ministry, opening for Nine Inch Nails in front of 60,000 people at Riot Fest in Chicago. I was there in the crowd, by the way. Now, That's there you go. There you go. Ryan, you topping that or not? How the hell am I going to follow the Grammys? Are you serious? Just take the mic away. <laughs> You've had a moment in your life. Though, Jay. Listen, any day that I get to do this instead of turning a wrench is it's wonderful. Good answer. Awesome. Good answer, guys. I like that. You know, you all appreciate what you do. And as you mentioned, sometimes it's not about the music. Sometimes it's about getting out there and having a good time, seeing other people having a good time, other artists performing and things like that. So, um, right now, what do you got going on? So you're here to, to promote a, a local single or something. Tell me about what's going on right now. Why are you traveling here to Newport Richie at, at, in Florida? And uh, give me a little bit of background of the band. Where are you guys from? Well, I'm currently in Los Angeles, but the band is from New York City. And we're here on the Gummy Worms Tour. It's our national tour, and we're promoting our new single, Trash Fire, featuring Angel Nightmare and Vogue Hills. And that's the first single from an upcoming album that we're working on. We're not exactly sure the release date of that album right now, but we have some really good material in the works. We're playing a bunch of new stuff here. All right, and so you have uh, a single, and you're going to be releasing some more material. Yeah. What's a website? What's a Facebook page? Something that we can get a hold of you and see some of this. You can search anywhere for Justin Symbol. That's S-Y-M-B-O-L. Or you can search Star Daddy. You'll find it either way. Fantastic. Well, listen, guys, it's been a great uh, great time here. appreciate all the answers, and, and, and nice to meet you guys. I'm going to go inside, see you guys perform a little bit. And remember, you're watching FM TV for the music television, and I am the beanie guy. We'll be back in just a couple minutes. I'm Star Daddy. DJ Swamp. RMFL. You are watching FM TV. I'm the Bougie Man. Bougie Man. <laughs> All right, he's a solo artist, as I was saying. He creates his own beat. We are Requiem Rust out of San Antonio, Texas. For these interviews, segments, and our episodes in their entirety, be sure to go to our YouTube page and subscribe. Coming up on our next episode of Florida Music Television, I meet Greg Riley at Johnny G's in Lakeland for the Tattooed Sweetheart Bikini Contest Reunion Tour. We will interview Greg and some of the lovely Tattooed Sweethearts before they go and strut their stuff on the stage. Then we go to Quaker Steak and Lou for Tampa Bay Music Network's 12th Annual Musicians Appreciation Party with some of the best musicians around the state of Florida. We interview a couple of them and watch some of their amazing performances performances. While we were there, we ran into some other artists who came to support the show and we found out more about them and their products. Also, we were there and I ran into the Tiger Lady. She does a lot of Saturday night car shows there at Quaker Steak and Lube and a lot of them are for local charities and benefits. She also introduced me to her husband who has an awesome classic El Camino. All this and much more coming up on the next episode of FMTV Florida Music Television.